Matthew chapter 7, verse 7 and 8. It's where we start tonight. Matthew 7, 7 and 8. Ask, and it will be given to you. Seek, you will find. Knock, and it will be opened to you. For everyone who asks, receives, and he who seeks, find, and to him who knocks, it will be opened. When you have to knock for a door to be opened, it means you have to make a demand. And the prerogative of decision is for the person within. So what you do is that you show a sense of urgency and mission by knocking. That's, a, that's an experience before a door. In Revelation chapter 4 verse 1 and 2, we saw another experience before another door. It said, after these things, look, behold, a door standing open in heaven. It was standing open. And the first voice which I heard was like a trumpet speaking to me. Come up here and I will show you things which must take place after this. Immediately I was in the spirit. And behold a throne set in heaven. And one sat on the throne. This other experience, the door is open. If there is no movement, it is on the path of the person that the door is open to. The first one you knock, the door to be open to you. This one, the door, the open door itself is the invitation. Are we together? I said the open door is what? Is the invitation. Let's start tonight by going to the book of Philippians chapter 4. Philippians chapter 4, verse 10 to 15. But I rejoice in the Lord greatly. My prayer for you and me is that we will rejoice in the Lord. Greatly. Which means rejoicing in the Lord as degrees. I'm praying that for you and me will be filled to the utmost with joy. Amen. I rejoice in the Lord greatly that now at last your care for me has flourished again. That's going to be the title for tonight. Flourish again. Your care for me has flourished again. Though you did care, but you lacked opportunity. Not that I speak in regard to need, for I have learned in whatever state I am to be content. I know how to be abased and how to abound. Everywhere and in all things I have learned both to be full and to be hungry. Both to abound and to suffer need. I can do all things through Christ who strengthens me. Nevertheless, you have done well in that you have shared in my distress. Now you Philippians know that in the beginning when I departed from Macedonia, no church shared with me concerning giving and receiving, but you only. Apostle Paul showed us that there are different types of possibilities that happen in the life of a believer. And he listed at least three. He said, I'm happy that your care has flourished again for me. He said, and I'm not speaking because of need. Because I've learned in whatsoever state I am, both to abase and to abound. In other words, both to be constrained and to be expressed. Are we together? The truth of the matter is that it is not every moment of the Christian journey that is always very exciting. There are moments that look like you have been abased. 
There are moments that your salvation is actually even in being humble. There are moments that your salvation is actually even in being quiet. Are we together? And there are other moments of exhilaration. There are other moments of joy. So this apostle said, I, have, I, I know how to walk in these two extremes. I've been able to abase and to abound. He said it in another way, I know how to be full and I know how to be hungry. He said, I know how to abound and how to suffer need. Year 2020 has been a year of so many constraints. And we are not ashamed because we have the technique, we have the tool to even live in the seasons when we are being abased. We don't only rejoice in God when we are abounding. Are we together, church? We don't only rejoice in the Lord when everything goes right like we plan it. We can find a purpose in God when a year proves very tough. We can both still learn in the midst of such an experience to be abased. And we do all these things through Christ that strengthens us. Somebody say amen. Everything about the kingdom is not always exciting. Everything about believing is not always exciting. In the book of Revelation chapter 1, verse 9 and 10. Revelation chapter 1, verse 9 and 10. Apostle John was on the island of Patmos. He said, I, John, your brother and companion in the tribulation. Somebody said the tribulation. We don't just share company in the victories. We share company what? In the tribulation. We are brothers and companions in tribulation and kingdom and patience. Somebody said tribulation. Kingdom and patience. Tribulation because we endure things that are going that we are going through. Patience because we can't change them. We have to wait on God to bring in his wisdom to bring everything together. Many times we want to be brethren in the kingdom. And when we talk about the kingdom, we talk about the power of his kingdom. But we are not just companions in his kingdom. We are companions in his tribulation. We are companions in his patience. Are we together? He said, we are, he said, I'm your brethren. He said, I was in the island called Patmos for the word of God. I was not there because I was a sinner. I was not there because I, I broke the law. I'm there because of the word of God. There are certain things I want to preach tonight that might not be applicable to you if you have never suffered for righteousness. If you have never been a companion in tribulation. If you have only tried to experience the kingdom in his eyes. He said, I was there for the word of God and for the testimony of Jesus. And I want to ask you tonight clearly, what has the word of God cost you before? Do you know because of the word of God, you might not make certain type of money that you could have made. Because you are sensitive to a word. There is a word alive in you. So you see, you understand the constraints that it can bring. Not just the victories that it can bring. The word can tell you that you cannot put your hands into something. Even though that something looks like what can advance you. Are we together? I need to ask you, because I need to find company for what I'm preaching tonight. And the company will be for people who can relate that the word of God can bring you to these states. Are we together? He said, I, I was in Patmos because of the word of God and because of the testimony of Jesus. What has your testimony of Jesus cost you in 2020? And he said, in verse 10, he said, I was in the spirit of the Lord's day. I heard behind me the Lord, a loud voice like of a trumpet. He had a visitation of the Lord in the island of Patmos. He was not there on a retreat. It was actually placed there for punishment. It was a very withdrawn island. Very far. It was full of animals. They left him to have to die. Because of the word. Most of us are not used to the constraints that the word can bring. 
to our lives. Jesus said one of the things, he said some people are like people who receive the seed upon the rock. And he said what happened is that the seed sprouted immediately. He said, but when temptation, when tribulation for the word came, when affliction for the word came, they just withered away. You know, in the book of Acts of the Apostles, chapter 14, from verse 8, Apostle Paul was in a city called Lystra. And in that city, he saw a man crippled from his mother's womb who had never walked. And Paul was speaking and preaching the gospel. And when Paul looked at that man, Paul saw that the man had faith to be healed. Because when something is rising in your spirit, it can even reveal on your face. Wisdom can make the face of a man to shine. Paul looked at this man and he knew that he had faith to be healed. And he spoke to the man, stand up straight on your feet. And he leaped and walked. Faith brings victories. It will give you one tonight. It was so amazing. Those are the highs of the kingdom. Those are the days. Those are the experiences we want to have. Those are the things we are trusting God to restore more in a more consistent way in our churches. That faith will be in the heart of the preacher and faith will be in the heart of the hearers so that we can communicate and bring things to pass in God. Are we together, church? Stand up and walk. But after he did that, the Bible said the whole city was, they were moved. They were moved so much that they believed that Paul and Barnabas were gods that came in the human form. They were so moved that they began to even prepare to sacrifice to them. How many of you would like to be in Paul's company on such an expedition, such a missionary journey? How many of you know miracles are contagious? You go to a meeting. Before you start preaching, somebody gets healed. The preacher automatically just moves from zero to 1,000 degrees of faith. Because God has started even moving. You are just a by, you know, you are just passing by, seeing what God is doing. There was so much exhilaration in the city. If Paul had to calm them down and say, we are not gods, we are men like you. When you get to verse 19 and 20, that same city, verse 19 and 20, the Jews from Antioch and Iconium came there. They persuaded the multitude. They stoned Paul. They dragged him out of the city, supposing him to be dead. That's not small stoning. When you want to stone somebody to die, that's with some vehemence. In the same city, we have experienced two things. We have experienced healing. The exhilaration of being called gods. And we have experienced tribulation and persecution. To the point of being left for dead. In the same city. And every Christian experience is pregnant with these two. If truly you are working with Jesus. There will be moments of great victory and there will be moments of great endurance. The Bible says, however, the disciples gathered around him, they rose up and went to the city and the next day departed with, he rose up and went into the city. That's some strength. He was dragged out of the city, stoned to die. The brethren surrounded him. He rose up again and went back into the city. And the next day he departed. To a, to a place called Derby, verse 21 and 22. And when he had preached the gospel to that city and made many disciples, they returned to Lystra again. That's the place where he was where he healed the man and where he was stoned, to Iconium and to Antioch, strengthening the souls of the disciples, exhorting them to continue in the faith, saying, We must through many tribulations enter the kingdom of God. He went back to Lystra and said, Lystra, here. Yeah, God does not just heal. 
God strengthens his saints to go through things because that is the pathway through which we enter the kingdom. Are we together? So in Lystra, he, ex he, ex he expressed the two dimensions of the kingdom. So like John was speaking in the book of Revelation, he said, I am your brother in the kingdom and the tribulation and the patience of our Lord Jesus Christ. I don't know why that many believers today can fellowship with his sufferings. I know we can fellowship with his crown. Some people, many of us are so depressed, so down this year because a lot of things that we planned did not come to pass. And we feel, some people even feel cursed. You're going to get to a point where you're going to be a companion of tribulation because it's, you see, it's, it's not about what we are going through, it's about what we are going into. We must, through many tribulations, enter. So, because of what we are going into, we are not moved by what we are going through. You remember Jesus, the Bible said, because of the glory that was set ahead of him, he despised the shame. Are we together? I don't know whether you have lost anything because of Jesus. Have you ever entered a deal and it was, it was so promising? Everything was promising until the last moment. And somebody said, you know what? This deal is yours. But it is 40 for me, 40% for me. And all your Christian values. Now, the problem is that you see, Christians don't even give a thought to it now. They do it straight. That's why they don't feel the sense of pressure. They think it's normal. Because our faith does not play a principal role in many things we do anymore. So if you find yourself in such a day and say 40% is for me, you don't even tell pastor, you just say, it's normal. What do you call it? PR. Looking for the businessmen. I'm not sure you have suffered any loss because of Jesus this year. You could have suffered loss because of wrong decisions. You could have suffered loss. I'm, I'm talking, for, I'm looking for my companion in the tribulation of Jesus. I'm not looking for people who have suffered for their folly. Do we even have many people who are in the tribulation of Jesus? Who don't answer back because Jesus will not allow them. Most of you would have answered back and said, Father, forgive me. Let me, first, let me first let them know that they are not dealing with a fool. You cannot follow the pattern of Jesus who was led to the sheep as a uh, uh, to, the, to the slaughter like a sheep, but he did not open his mouth. How many of you think it is very easy to close your mouth when there is great danger? You can't even look stupid for your spouse for Christ, even where you are already accepted. Everything today, we are the one fighting our own battles. So maybe I'm not even teaching to people who can understand tribulations of Christ. And if you are not, if you don't understand, you cannot be a company of, of, of the tribulations. But that's, that's not the entire focus of where we are going. In, in Luke 22 verse 28, this is one of the descriptions Jesus gave to the disciples that you must have if you are truly a disciple. Look at what he said. But you are those who have continued with me in my miracles. Hmm? Who are they? They are those who have continued with what? With him in what? Trials. Please, how many cities did they chase Jesus away from? If you don't understand it, he cast out a legion from a man at Gadarene. The honorarium they gave Jesus for casting out 6,000 demons from a man is that they begged him to leave their coast. If you, could come, if you by a word could cast out a legion and a city refused you, what would you do? He went to a city of Samaria and they did not want him to come in. And the disciples were very angry. Let, let's call down fire. You don't know the kind of spirit that you have. And he went away. 
is full of so many experiences where Jesus just passed through the midst of the crowd to escape because his hour had not yet come. And the disciples were, they wake up tomorrow morning to follow that type of man. Who wakes up tomorrow morning to follow a man that ran out of the crowd yesterday to escape dying? And he still says, I am Messiah. I mean, if that night they wanted to arrest him, he just raised his hand. And blindness came upon everybody. And he tells you tomorrow morning, let's go to Maduguri. What will you do? You say, I will follow. I will follow you. That's the type of Jesus we want to say. But Jesus said, if you want to qualify as my disciple, you must be able and ready to go through what? The trials. Jesus had a crowd he couldn't feed. And the disciples were helping him to do PR. He said, Jesus, it's already evening. Let's send these people away. We can't feed them. Then Jesus said, you should be able to feed them. <laughs> he wanted to make Jesus know that he is in trouble. They said, you know what? We only have five loaves and two fishes. And they expected him to say, ha! Please quickly disperse the crusade. Then Jesus changed the tone. He said, let them sit. Let them sit. It's like when people, visitors come to your house and your wife know that the last food is the one she's cooking. She might, if you are not careful, she won't know when she's dragging. She will give you water. And the husband say, let them sit down. He's looking at the man. When they stay, he say, I hope you know that that's the last rise. Because you must do a miracle for this, your hospitality. Hallelujah. Jesus said, let them sit. They, they, they allow them to sit. These are strange people that follow Jesus in his trials. And they always saw something that God is faithful. In 2 Timothy chapter 2, from verse 8 to 13. 2 Timothy 2, verse 8 to 13. The Bible says, remember that Jesus Christ of the seed of David was raised from the dead according to my gospel. For which I suffer trouble as an evildoer, even to the point of chains. For the word of God is not chained. Therefore I endure all things for the sake of the elect. Somebody say endure. Now I'm, I'm dealing with a side that most of us are not used to. Paul said I'm able to abound and to abase. Now we talk more about the abounding, transformation, change, increase. But we are dealing more on the other side, the side of being abased, the side of enduring. He said, I endure all things for the sake of the elect that they may also obtain the salvation which is in Christ Jesus with eternal glory. This is a faithful saying that if we died with him, being with him can make us die with him. If we die with him, we will live with him. Somebody say Amen. If we endure, we will, we shall also reign with him. So, if we deny him, he will deny us. If we are faithless, he remains faithful, he cannot deny himself. So, he began to speak to us there. He said, he said if we die with him, we we'll live with him. If we endure, we will reign. Who wants to reign? If you want to abound, you must learn the capacity to abase with him. Because if you don't endure with him, you cannot reign with him. Are we together? So some of these constraints that we have faced this year, it is, we only lose when we don't face it with him. Are we together? Because if we go into it with him, and that is the attitude, he wants us to praise him even through it, then there is a promise that when we endure, we will what? We will reign. Are we together? I said we will reign. Many a times when, when you are faced so much of being abased, you forget that there is still something called abounding. When you have been hungry, you think, you think there is nothing called being full. And God said, I can be, you can be full too. God can satisfy you. Are we together? Don't get too addicted to suffering. Suffering is a pathway. 
We must through tribulations enter the kingdom. Tribulation is not the kingdom. When we endure, we will reign. So enduring is not a permanent address. It's a vehicle to reigning. Hallelujah. So if you have ever suffered anything because of Jesus, rejoice. Hallelujah. That's why I'm talking about flourish again. Abound again. Don't, get, don't collapse under a particular experience and forget there's another side to the experience. Don't collapse under enduring and forget there's something called raining. Don't collapse under a basin and forget there's something called abounding. You can do all things through Christ. Don't get too trapped knocking the door and forget there is another part called the open door. You don't get it. Which has nothing to do with what you are doing. It's even an invitation. The, on the other side, there is greater willingness. Because when you are knocking, it is as if the, 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 the strength or the power of the decision is more from your side. How many of you have lived through a season in your life that it looks like it's more about you? You looked around. There is no divine sign. You are the one knocking. In case God is not hearing. You are the one shouting. <laughs> but there is another sister where God opened doors. I said, you have to come. You have to come. God said, are we together? So don't get trapped in any of the experience. If you have been abased, don't forget you can abound in Christ. Hallelujah. The Lord will give you an open door. You will abound next year. Even in this same economy. Because there is something called open door. You didn't knock. God just said, the hour has come. And your hour has come. And it will bring his, the hour of your, of, your, of your movement forward to you. In Jesus' name. Psalm 105, verse 16 to 22. Psalm 105, verse 16 to 22. There's a story of Joseph. Bible says, moreover, he called for a famine in the land that is God. He destroyed all the provision of bread. He sent a man before them, Joseph, who was sold as a slave. They ought his feet with feathers. He was laid in iron. They placed handcuffs in him. One of the experiences of Joseph is that he became a prisoner. One of the signs of 20, one, one of the most popular scriptures of 2020 at one point is enter into your secret place, oh ye my people, and shut your door. How many of you remember when COVID 19 started? Everybody said, It's even written in the scripture. Until we stayed inside the house and it was start, started feeling like a prison. And even when they opened the door, it was still an enclosure. Then, only 10 people, only 15 people. We were first enjoying it. Then after some time, it was hurting us. It was not just hurting us physically, it was hurting business. Don't need to tell you, hot is preaching. How many crusades do you want to do? It was just kept until the time that his word came to pass. The word of the Lord tested it. The king sent and released him. Oh, so he was first placed in chains. Then on the other side, he was released. The, the ruler of the people, I'm going to talk in the course of the program about the ruler because God said we should pray for rulers. The ruler of the people let him go free. I'm praying that God will give rulers wisdom that will set nations free again. The world today, in many places, they are going through the second lockdown. And people are, ready, now, people are now restless. Holiday season is, is around as if it's not around. Not here. Even here, they are. I remember around December, when my wife was. How many of you have seen places that are decorated? It's called, they have, their feet are being feathers. 
I don't know if you know what I'm talking about. People say, when I'm through with 2020, I will say, thank you, God. But he let him go free. The first time he was calling for freedom, he told the butler, he said, please, when you get out, remember me. That's knocking the door. This other one, they let him go free. He didn't demand it. Because this constraint will be broken. Are you hearing me? I said this constraint will be broken. Not just here, but all over the world. And you are not saying the amen like you believe it. Don't get you used to it. And say, this is the new, it's not the new normal. The tribulation is not the new normal. It's just a pathway to the kingdom. The abasin is not the new normal. There is another side to it. It's called the abounding. The endearing is not the new normal. Are we together? No, because many a times, we immediately we shrink. We just want to stay there. Maybe this is what life is about. When we have to suffer losses for Christ, are we? Mm, this world is not my home. I'm just passing through. Come on, we'll just be. It's not your home. But you're an ambassador. Yeah. Nobody can arrest the, the, the ambassador of Benin Republic in Nigeria. If you are angry with him, you send him back home. But you cannot do anything about him. Which means, though he's in the land, there are some types of liberty that he has. Even in this world that is not the, your world, you have a spirit that is not of this world. That is the Holy Spirit that has been given to the church. Are we together? He made him ruler of his out, the ruler of all his possessions. To bind. He moved from being bound to binding. To bind princes at pleasure. I don't have time to. Because if you have been bound, when you are given the power to bind, there are three things you are looking for. There are three things he looked out for. The first time he was bound, he was lied against. So when he saw his brothers, he looked at them, he said, you are spies. And the brothers said, no, we are not spies, we are honest men. And he put all of them in prison. Then he called them out. He said, I don't want to, I'm a, I'm a man that fear God. I don't want to bind people. Because he knew, he was telling, he was actually making them pass through all his experiences. You remember that Potiphar's wife lied against him. That's the same way. He laid an accusation against his brother and they were striving and said, we are honest men. Do you know another thing? He, he remembered when he was bound. He remembered a man who forgot his promise. He was called the butler. The butler said, don't worry, when I get out of this place, you don't know what you did for me. He interpreted the dream. I will tell you, the Bible said for two years, the man forgot. So one day he told his brethren too, he said, the, there is famine in the land. He said, there is still yet five years. He said, but don't worry, I will take care of you. And when his father died, in Genesis 50, his brothers went to him and said, um, the father said, you must not to forget. He looked at them. I have learned not to forget promises. When I was bound, there are things I learned. So now, when I'm given the power to bind, you don't get it. When you are an high priest that has been taught with the feelings of infirmity, your use of power is more moderated. So the reason why God needs to allow you to go through some constraint is because that will give you the power to know how to use it when you are bound. You don't get what I'm talking about. The reason why you need to endure is so that when you are bound and when you are reigning, it is not just for your own will. So when he got there, he didn't imprison his brothers for his pleasure. He actually said, God sent me to preserve life. The pleasure he has now is to do the will of God. God has changed something in him through his own pain. That's why it's important, whether you like it or not, that you go through some things. I tell you the truth. You will never learn and understand certain things until you go through some things. It's constraints. This, you know what it means to allocate scarce resources. You have some money. 
your father, your mother, your in-law, church. Have you ever tried to do some budget and you are almost running mad? And none seem in the everything. So will I just take care of my wife and forget my my friend? Before somebody lose dignity and honor. God said, well, I leave. And you know what? When you are facing it, you don't hear God. God said, sit down there. Let me see how you are thinking. <laughs> Some of you this year have exposed your thinking to you. Because when you are shut down, and you are in feathers, and you are in chains, and you couldn't go, and you couldn't break anything. We, we weren't yet through with COVID. We came with answers. All of us that thought we love activism, where we started seeing violence. I say, Father, ah, it's not what we are praying. Everybody say, yeah, there can be answers too, but now we have more wisdom. Have you noticed that the next one, we have more common sense. If they say, let's negotiate, we will suddenly negotiate. You know, because where we had, in a nation where we don't know how many people die, life began to have, start having some they said they can't shoot us. Some of us were living in illusion. They said, if we wrap ourselves in Nigerian flag, you didn't know the people you are dealing with. They've been in power since 1966. President Buhari was involved in the first coup in Nigeria in 1966. Well, yeah, they, they, we wrap ourselves in Nigerian flag. They shot people in Nigerian army uniform. But don't worry. The next one will come with greater wisdom. Because Nigeria will be free. Whether you believe it or not, God has started something. It's a non-negotiable move of God. Somebody say amen. amen. Hallelujah. To bind these princes. When God sent Moses to Egypt, And God began to show him the signs that will happen. He was very excited to go. The rod became serpent. And he felt like if I get to Egypt, it's going to be a very easy mission. I'm just going to show them the power of the living God. Like most of us have the feeling we have received power when the Holy Ghost has come upon us. And we thought life is going to be a very easy ride. But when Moses got there, he discovered a whole different experience. In Exodus chapter 5, verse 15 to 23. Then the officers of the children of Israel came and cried to Pharaoh saying, Why are you dealing thus with your servants? There is no straw given to all your servants and they say, Make brick. One of the things that, that eats you so much in 2020 is how many of you have a business space you rented that was very unproductive I mean, because of lockdown? And your rent finished around that time. What did your landlord say? He did say, oh, I understand the economic implication. What's happened? What did he say? You have been defaulting. Even here, they did it to us. I was very angry. But it has been here. They didn't give you the straw, but they said, Make brick. And indeed your servants are fall, but the, are, and your servants are beaten, but the fault is in your own people. And they say, you are I do. I do. Therefore you say, let's go and sacrifice to the Lord. Go now therefore and walk, for no straw will be given you, but you shall deliver the quarter of bricks. Whether you walk from home, or you walk, you will deliver the quarter of brick. In fact, in many places, you will deliver more. You see, see this pass of me, all of them, this 
top management. It doesn't cost them anything to say. Um, because of what is happening, we have to cut staff's salary. Have you noticed it? It is when you are looking for uh, increase that you have to go on strike. But when they want to cut salary, if we wonder, some state, uh, they just mentioned recession. I had the state government already saying we'll be paying half salary. They just mentioned recession last week. They love that type of thing. They would like to increase quota, but when they want to give the remuneration, it's always struggle. How many of you face this this year? That's why you are. When, that's why many times, even when some of you come to church, your eyes are hard. You are so shrunk. You are abased. And you are not even doing it through Christ. You are doing it through experiences. Everything, thing I call plan, Lord. Everything just cut out. <laughs> the officers of the church of Jesus saw that they were in trouble. After it was said, you shall not reduce any bricks from your daily quarter. And as they went, came out from Pharaoh, they met Moses. Who is Moses? The man who said, the Lord spoke to me. As you are coming out of that experience, you come to church. Then you call me. I'm looking at pastor. You better do a miracle tonight. All this, uh, it shall, things are getting better. You are singing. I mean, pastor. They met Moses and Aaron. Who stood there to meet them? Look at what they told Moses. He said to him, let the Lord look on you and judge. You are the one that was telling us this year there will be harvest. 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 I, 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 one of my guys said, when I said harvest 2020, he said, oh, God, oh, shit, loud, loud, no? <laughs> the first two months, it was just ah, harvest symbol, harvest symbol. <laughs> the money should not spend. <laughs> yeah, said, the harvest is coming. Ah, harvest is coming. You don't have any right. To make conclusions on God. You wait on him. So when Moses came out. Started looking at him with another eye. They let the Lord look on you and judge. Because you have made us abhorrent in the sight of Pharaoh and the sight of servant. To put a sword in his hand to kill us. <laughs> Moses returned to them and said, Lord. Why have you brought this trouble on these people? Why is it that you have sent me? For since I came to Pharaoh to speak in your name, he has done evil to these people. Neither have you. Does God deliver? Are there moments where you look out for deliverance and the only thing you see is constraints? Thank God, you have not delivered. We face the famine like everybody faced it. We have to organize <laughs> how to change our spending pattern, even though we are covenant people. You have not done any deliverance. Ah, call it all running. Ah, if we go in, sorry. But you have not done. There are people here that cannot use all their mouth to talk about. <laughs> they said there's pastor application service, there's police service next week. I mean, I'm going to because since you spoke to these people, you have not done. Any deliverance. I said I will marry this year. By, by, the, by April, I knew this plan can't work. <laughs> you have not done any deliverance. Exodus 6 verse 9. God kept speaking to Moses. Look at it. Moses spoke to the children of Israel, but they did not heed Moses. Because of anguish. This, this is the reason why you need to flourish again. Anguish have a way of shrinking people. There are many spiritual people today that are impervious to word. Because of what? Anguish. The only thing you had this month, this year is redu salary reduction. And that's why say you are going higher. To higher when you are how many of you know you are going higher? Who went higher this year? <laughs> ah. They said by faith. By faith. We can, including some of you, they increase your salary as they say by faith. 
So Moses was preaching, but the thing didn't enter because of anguish. He said, God. Some people have reminded God they are aged this year. God, in case you forgot, I'm 35. 35. We are, you know, the Bible says, bring forth your strong reasons. <laughs> the Lord. <laughs> April, <laughs> April 18, I became 35. Just to remind you. So Moses went back to God and said, God, I don't know what you are doing. Look at the answer of God for Moses. Exodus 7 from verse 1. The Lord said to Moses, see, I have made you a God to Pharaoh. <laughs> and you know your brother will be prophet. Just speak all that I command you. I, mean, I said you did not do anything. <laughs> Aaron, your brother, shall test Pharaoh to send the children of Israel out of the land. I will add in his heart. I multiply my signs and wonders in the land. Pharaoh will not heed you. <laughs> I thought some of you say, God, if you are good with me, before I say it, Pharaoh, God said, Pharaoh will not heed you. But it's so that I might bring my hand on Egypt and bring my armies and my people, the children of Israel, out of the land of Egypt by great judgments. And the Egyptians said, I know that I'm the Lord when I stretch out my hand on Egypt and bring out the children of Israel from among them. And Moses and Aaron did so just as the Lord commanded them. So they did. Verse 7. Moses was 80 years old. Aaron was 83 years old. When they spoke. Aaron. The challenge that sometimes we look around and we don't see much deliverance. Is it at the national level? So I think God, the God of our, that dealt with that God of 1998, about just where are you? Where are you? What's happening in the land? Say such things. He rejoice. Oh, yes. They said they have deregulated petrol. They said, yes, Lord. And you had 165. Did God hear prayer? Eh? What's, the, what's the bag of rice in your market now? Eh? Eh? 24. Nibolo Tiri. 24. 24. Hello, hello, <laughs> if some of you dare to use your salary to buy one bag of rice at all which increase electricity tariff you will not sense that there is any deliverance Isaiah 26 verse 17 and 18 going somewhere we have, we have experienced this constraint but don't forget we can both abide abyss and abound. I will not be shrunk to the point that I stop believing that there is another side of God. I will not get trapped with the fact that I'm knocking to forget that there is another side called an open door. As a woman with child is in pain and cries out in her pants, she draws near the time of her delivery. So have we been in your sight, O Lord. We have been with child. We have been in pain. We have, as it were, brought forth wind. We have not accompanied any deliverance in the earth. Nor have the inhabitants of the world fallen. I'm, I want you to look into your life this year. Don't worry. Okay. <laughs> it's in my theories, watches. Hallelujah. I want you to look into your life this year. Sincerely. Now, I know God is faithful, but this is an experience you have to go through. Many prayers are answered. I know. Now, I'm not trying to make you look like God is not faithful. But some of you want to make up for God. Even if I, even if I God shall answer prayer, I'm here. Don't worry. 
God does not need your lie to propagate his truth. If he has not done it, tell me he has not done it. There's no where. Jesus touched a man. He was blind. Then Jesus said, how do you see? The man didn't say, the man said, I see men walking on the street. The man said, hey, I charge my manager. <laughs> if some of us say, ah, well, I was blind, but now I'm seeing men. Jesus, how do you see? He said, Jesus touched him the second time. Don't, don't lie to yourself. There were some, there were many others that we just, we, we have not wrought any deliverance. Too many plans failed. Of nations, of churches, of families. Individuals. I remember during the lockdown, it just became normal. When you cannot do something, it's COVID. How many of you, know, how many of you used it to escape some things? Our COVID, you know. Including the people that have no plan. That are not even productively engaged. When you say, what is this? Say, it's this COVID. You know, it's this COVID thing. Some people could not pay their house when they say it's COVID. An escape. Some other people were even afraid when the things are opening up because there was no, <laughs> no valid excuse anymore. Isaiah 66, verse 7 to 11. Let me begin to try to go. Isaiah 66. Before she was in labor, she gave birth. Now we've seen labor that brought forth wind. But we are seeing the other side. Before she was in labor, she gave birth. Before her pain came, she was delivered of a male child. Who has heard of such a thing? Who has seen such a thing? Shall the heart be made to give birth in one day? Or shall a nation be born at once? For as soon as Zion was in labor, she gave birth to her children. Shall I bring to the time of birth and not cause delivery, said the Lord? Shall I cause delivery? Shall I who cause delivery shut up the womb, says your God? Rejoice with Jerusalem, be glad with her, all you will love her. Rejoice with her, all you will mourn for her, that you may feed and be satisfied with the consolation. There is something called consolation for money. Like when a woman is about to give birth, she moves from pain to what? Joy. The Bible says the type of joy that she will forget all her sorrow. By this open door, you will forget all your constraints. Amen. It will look like a dream. Amen. Why can't you preach the God is this thing? God will break that constraint. Amen. 2021, your door will open. Amen. If you believe, you say the amen very well. Shall I cause to bring to birth and shut the womb? Hey, don't. You, are, you could be going through the stress, but I have not changed my plan. When I cause to come to birth, it's because I want to bring forth. I want to bring forth. When I cause to endure, it's because I want you to reign. When I allow you to see pain, the pain is for you to push so that your joy can come. Are we together? God has not stopped being good. Even though you have faced so much of stress, God has not changed. God is good. Hallelujah. I've come to raise your desires and your faith again to, to make you understand that God is good. Hallelujah. Are we together? You will be satisfied with consolations. Say so that you will drink deeply and be delighted with the abundance of our glory. If I tell you that God opens a door for you, you are not knocking. This what should you do? In Acts chapter 12, Herod arrested James and Peter. He killed, he killed James. Kept Peter in the prison. Before, with four guards in the innermost prison, Acts chapter 12. The Bible says the church was praying constantly for Peter. 
And that night, an angel of the Lord appeared. He was bound between, in two chains between two soldiers. Guards were before the door, keeping the prison. Then the angel of the Lord stood by him, and a light shone in, in, in prison, and it struck Peter on the side. Arise quickly, and chains fell. All through the day, he struggled to get his hand off the chains. But this time, the chains fell. There are people that have been through pressure. That when you tell them, God can change the story. That's you don't know what I've gone through. The chains fell. Well, the way it happened, Peter said, this is a dream. I am not used to doors opening. I'm used to knocking doors. Some people are used to the leg bank. Come here, easy, low, low. You need about seven problems. Some of you pray a simple prayer tonight. Very simple prayer. And you have great answers. It's called an open door. The Bible said he moved out. The angel said, put on your sandals. And they put on the garment and follow me. And, and they put it on. Yes, the next verse. And I, he went out and followed them and did not know that what was done by the angel was real. That was in a vision. Yes? So they went past the first and the second guard post. They came to the iron gate that leads to the city. Which opened of his own accord. He didn't knock. It's not that they went to get new instruments to open door. Just that the season changed. You know, sometimes in life, there is a time to abound. It just happens. There is a time to be abased. You see, you can't pray yourself out of that season. You can only go through it. You can only enjoy it. And there is another time too to abound. Even if you don't want to abound, it is late. You didn't get it. When they got to the, 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 the gate, gate open, iron gate. And Peter went out. And the angel left him. Then he found himself on the street. If they open the door for you and you are found alone, what should you do? You make steady acceleration. You don't stop there. I want to ask you a question tonight. If God opens a door for you, what will you do? Some people will still be, they will still be in the prison, in the mind. This, this is not real. The, the, you don't get what I'm saying. I know you don't like praying, but if I tell you that there is an open door in prayer, I know you don't like prayer. What will you do? Because there could be such days in the spirit. How can God who has our prayer come to a man? It was not the man knocking God. God said, ask anything I will give you. The man said, <laughs> if it's some of you saw, what will you say? God, wait. Then God called Lord, will listen. But Solomon was so processed that when God said ask, he knew what to ask. When you have gone through the process of being abased, when God opens the door, you know exactly what to do. If you have not been perfected in that process, that's when you get to the process of being abounded or to abound, then you are confused. Some of us know now what to do when God changed the season. You don't get what I'm saying. It will be folly for you to go back as though you were not instructed. When they opened the door for Peter, Peter said, this is not a dream. The Bible said he went to where the church was praying. He met another door. That door was locked. The iron gate opened. But this one, it was knocking. And when it was knocking, a particular girl called Rhoda came. And when Rhoda got there, he had, he didn't even open the door. 
She was rejoicing. Peter is at the door. The people that were praying said, you, you are mad. How many people pray without believing? I thought they were praying, God deliver Peter. Oh, you are the almighty. Then they said, Peter is, is at the door. I thought you said, God change the season. I'm saying now that there's an open door. People say, Pastor, Emma, Emma, don't, don't let us, I don't want to have hope. And yet you have been praying. Do you know how people can be praying? And when the hope is presented, they don't even want to give a thought to it. They said, when they couldn't stop the gate, they said, oh, it's his angel. But the Bible said, Peter kept knocking. He kept knocking. And when they opened the door, they were astonished. Two lessons there. It's possible for the iron door to open by itself and the door of the praying church to be kept shut because many people pray without believing what they are praying about. Number two. The Bible told us the next morning there was no small stair by the soldiers. Get me that verse. Where the soldiers woke up the next morning. As soon as it was there, there was no small stare among the soldiers about what had become of Peter. When Herod had searched for him and found him, he examined the guards and commanded that they should put them to death. Because there was no way the soldiers... Then the soldier said, we don't know what happened. You are too intelligent. Tell me you don't know what happened. You are a soldier. You have invested much confidence in people that does not know how God does things. The reason, if you read your story, the scripture, that girl called Rhoda was a servant girl. Nobody, you know, when they were knocking, they go and see, go and see who is at the door. She was to report back and say, is this person there? We say, open the door. She doesn't have the authority. But, so when she was telling them, it's Peter, they say, madness. The person they place less emphasis, less value on, said, Peter's door has been opened. One of the words God gave me this afternoon is that the mouth of made servants will proclaim the glory of God. You will be shocked where God will put answers. The soldiers they trusted soon explain what happened. The road that they did not trust. Because when she told them Peter is at the door, how does it look? The road that they did not trust. When God gets moving, you will see God move in places you least expect. In the last days, I'll part my spirit upon all flesh. Your sons and daughters. Even upon your handmaiden. When God wants to do something that is that cannot be restrained, He even uses unlikely vessels to proclaim it. And you are going out to tell people the prayer has been answered. Amen. I want you to tell some of them. Eh? I'm not just having excitement because the year is ending. I'm having excitement because my prayers are answered. Do you believe that church? If you believe you say amen very well. Job 36 verse 15 and 16. Job 36. 15 and 16. Job 36, 15 and 16. It delivers the poor in the affliction. It opens the it open and opens their ears in oppression. Indeed, it would have brought you out of their distress into a broad place where there is no restraint. Give me to me in KJV. I like the way KJV says it. Who is reading KJV? Do you have KJV there? If you have authorized King James Version. 
I know in faith trace we read. Okay. Even so, we would have removed thee out of the strait into a broad place. Strait is tight place. Where there is no straightness. And which, that which shall be set on thy table shall be full of fatness. I will remove you from a straight place. I will break restraint and bring you to a place where there is no no the word straight is constraint I have learned both to abase and to abound where your table will be full of fatness your table will be full of fatness there's a stage where in life where you eat what you find there's a stage where you eat what you want my mother used to say nobody asks any children have, are you full they ask have you eaten that is the place but God has blessed them Today, if you bring their grandchildren home and those ones say, I don't want to eat, they will say, Ah, there is a. You don't want that one, then there is this one. Because God took them out of that straightness. And this is my belief. Because I don't want you to get trapped the way this year is doing it. Ah, Lord. Some people are so shrunk that they don't even want to look up. They don't even want to aspire. They don't even want to do anything. They don't even want to. Some people are so shrunk. Even in faith. How many times have you prayed for somebody not to die and they died? What happens to you? This year I've been privileged to stand over a dead body. Pray. Twice. They didn't wake. But at least I tried. Some of you will still be having nightmare. I remember one was shot. And I saw his, the video he posted about three minutes before. I mean, that is. His birthday was a day before that day. I mean that thing couldn't leave me when they i was finished it was a sunday i was just through with service when somebody called me and said pastor they shot somebody one of our friends when i hear gun i said god they said let's be praying let's be praying then about two or three hours they called me we are standing over his body now pastor pray for 15 minutes on the phone i went in you know how you go in? <laughs> I went in. I went in. Eddie was there physically over the body. Eddie said, she, he moved. That we increased the faith. But it was gone. Now, when I say I want to pray for this, Pastor Emma, Pastor Femisi, you have shrunk so much. That the next time when I tell you, you know, your next miracle will happen on plant. Yeah. 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 When they say shadows eat, it's not your plan. Yeah. You are passing by. And the shadow, I have seen on plant miracles. But in 2020, I've seen a boy born for four years without talking. In five minutes of prayer, his mouth was opened in 2020. I've seen miracles this year. If you think that, so don't shrink your mouth. I've seen miracle deliveries. I've seen people that they said we not have a child. There's a couple I was privileged to join a couple of years ago, and they've not had children. I've, and I got bothered. And I told God, not this year must not pass. 
And I became very and God had. God had not faith. I hope your faith has not shrunk to the point that oh, yes. And I talk to you that God has done great things. I've seen miracles. I've learned both to abound and to abase. And if you have been abased, please learn to flourish again. It's time to what? Let your faith flourish again. Let it flourish again. And say, ah, I mean, things are not working. Can I give you a testimony? In 14 years of being in Ibadan, this is my most abundant year. You call it COVID year, I don't know. This year, money has been the least of my problems. Without stroke, in COVID. Yes, then. Eh? I'm a bill. I do things that don't do, that, that don't take significant. One of it that happened to me today. I, I just I just did something last night. No, I just I didn't take significant. When I saw the alert, you know what they call alarm? Oh, do down alarm. Ah, I said. Hey. In 2020, they, they, oh no, Audrey, who told you there are no miracles within it? Don't shrink. I have learned both to abase and abound. Favors. Lockdown 2020. We're preaching online, preaching online, preaching online. There is a particular young man that has been following this ministry for over three years. I see him online. It's not like I know him, but we are never close. Then during the lockdown, he pinged me. He said, Pastor, you are not even giving up because I don't even put I don't put account number. I will just be sharing it. I don't even raise off. You are not even giving us opportunity. Sorry. So the first time he gave, ah, I thought it was a one-time offer. I said, ah, this is. Then he called me, said, Pastor, I will be paying every two two weeks. I hope. He said because <laughs> I, said, I said every word. God gave me partners in lockdown. You can abound. Now I'm not giving those testimonies to make you feel anything. I'm trying to tell you, don't shrink. To the point where you say, mm, I'm not looking forward to anything. It will bring you out of straightness into a broad place. Who is coming into a broad place? Isaiah 49 from verse 14 as we begin to tire. Are you blessed? Isaiah 49 from verse 14. It will bring you into a broad place. Projects will come to pass. Into a broad place. But Zion said, the Lord has forsaken me. My Lord has forgotten me. Can a woman forget her suckling child? That she will not have compassion on the son of our womb. Yet they may forget, yet I will not forget thee. Behold, I have graven thee upon the palm of my hand. Thy walls are continually before me. Thy children shall make case. Thy destroyers shall... And, and thy destroyers and they that made thee way shall go forth from thee. Those that make you desolate shall go forth. In the name of Jesus, coronavirus shall go forth. It will depart from the land. I thought you would say a big amen. Look at what he said. Lift up your eyes round about. And behold, all these gather themselves together and come to thee. As I live, says the Lord, thou shalt surely clothe thee, thou shalt surely clothe thee with them all as with an ornament and bind them on thee as a bride do it. For thy waste and thy desolate places 
and the land of thy destruction shall even now be too narrow by the reason of inhabitants. That is, there will be the land before he was swallowing, but now the inhabitants are multiplying more than the land. He said, look at it. He said, and, and they that swallow thee up shall be far away. I said, those that swallow you up. Because the truth of the matter is that God, it's not that God has not done things. It's many times that there are things that are opened up to swallow up every move. Every time there's an increase, something opens up and pulls it. It's called devourer. Those that swallow you up shall be far. Look at this word. The children which thou shalt have after you have lost the order. The children you will have after you have lost. So the loss is not a conclusion. The children you will have after you have loved the other. She is saying again in your ears. This place is too, too small. Give me a place. We used to say, let's manage it. But the children said, God has blessed us. We can't manage this again. Give me a place. Give me a place. Give me a place. Some people will call for new, new levels of responsibility. The ones you have been shrinking away from, you will rise and say, can, can there be something new? G give me a room. Give me a room to function. Give, give me some space. Give me some space. Give me some space. I, I want to do something new for God. I, I, want, I want to walk with God in a way I've never. I want to give to God in a way I've never given before. And I, I, there was a time I'm, I almost lost faith in this thing. But now, the children which thou shalt have after you have lost the other shall say, give me a place. Thou will say in thy heart, who has begotten this for me? Seeing I've lost my children, and I'm desolate, a captive, and removing to and fro. Who has brought up this? Behold, as I was left alone, and where had this been? He was seeing something around him that he couldn't trace. You don't get it. Yes, let's... Thus says the Lord, behold, I will lift up my hand to the Gentiles. And set my standard to the people. They will bring your son in their hands. Thy daughter shall be carried upon their shoulders. Yes. The king shall be thy nursing fathers. Queen. When queen are your nursing mother. That is not small pampering. That's, that's abounding. That's not uh, survive. You will not survive in 2021. You will flourish. You will flourish. Are, are you hearing me? Kings, kings. Now somebody say, it "Was Benny in that gave a testimony?" He said, what, what, "At the point in his ministry, he was having strong financial crisis, running to debts. So he kept praying. Then in prayer one day, he saw, he fell into a vision and saw a demon laughing at him, sitting on the wealth of his ministry." And he didn't know what to do. You've not heard the story before. And he said, he, he, the, the last money that was in the ministry, he bought a ticket and flew to Ora Robert. And he thought Ora Robert said, let's pray. You know what Ora Robert told him? Go and gather all the money in your ministry. Bring it and sow it into my ministry. Because God has blessed my ministry. So that demon can't enter. You've heard the story before. And Benny was stupid enough to believe. All of you people that are too intelligent. No, 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 no. Then he flew back and sat in his office. At least I've given everything. It's me and God. Then a phone call ran. And the woman said, oh, I have an offering for the minister. Well, that's all give. You know, you know, there are some ways people just call. Then the woman sent him. A million dollars many years ago. That was his first minute. He said, eh? So the woman called the next day. What does it thank you? The woman said, oh, oh, do you need more? Ah. Is there is it, because some of you don't know such questions can exist in this world? Yes. 
See, I wanted to. Do you need more? And then we still. Then the woman said five hundred thousand dollars. Then the, the next the woman called. By the end of the week, the woman had sent him three million dollars. That was how Benny changed forever. <laughs> Do you understand? I'm praying people will ask you very strange questions. You know, the question you have had this year is that, please, can I get? You are knocking. The question you will have, you will be asked, they will hear in a, Do you need? There is one, three plots. I just feel like, can you use it? Do you have anything you want to do? You know, I know you know, God does such things. There's these three plots. We just feel like, <laughs> you know, I've always told myself, when people are saying there's no land, it's a lie. They just bought one land on, my, on the way to my house. I, I just saw, you know, when they buy land, you just see that they will begin to use this color, uh, this iron sheet. So, Mama pointed it to me. I said, So, there's land there. It is what God has not decided to give you that you are looking for. When God says, I want to give you something, the iron gate will open by itself. People you are looking for will start looking for you. It's called an open door. It's called an open door. Are you following me? The God you are knocking his door will start visiting you by himself. You don't get it. You know, there's a point you are praying to God. There's a point. There was a door open in heaven. And the Spirit said, come up. Let me show you. He was not saying, God, show me the future. God said, I want to show you. I want to. It is my plan to show you. When God begins to say, I will not do a thing without speaking to, to my servant. That is not the servant's position. That is the position God brought the servant. God said, will I do this thing in Sodom and I will not tell Abraham. Abraham did not pray. Say an open door. Even spiritually, there are open doors. Where God just releases himself. I said, come. At that point, do you know what is happening? You are the one even catching up. Paul called it. He said, I want to apprehend the reason why I was apprehended. Are you following me? It's not I'm pursuing God. It's God laying hold on me. Stand to your feet, everybody. Five doors God can open. Five doors God can open. Show you tonight in the name of Jesus, the constraints and the restraints will be broken. It will bring all of us into a fat place. In Acts chapter 5, verse 19, God opened prison doors, He placed the apostles in a prison. Acts chapter 5, verse 19. 19. But the angel of the Lord by night opened the prison doors and brought them forth. When, what, wherever you have felt constrained, don't settle there and think it is the normal. Don't leave the normal with the lockdown, the shutdown. God opened prison doors. Number two, God opens the door of faith. Acts 14 verse 27. Acts 14 verse 27. Suddenly the Gentiles started receiving the Holy Ghost. And when they were come together, they gathered the church together and rehearsed all that God had done with them. And how he had opened the door of faith unto the Gentiles. The faith started happening in places you least expect. Gentiles were first called Gentiles, but suddenly they became fellow citizens of the household of God. God opens door of faith. God opens door of ministry. 2 Corinthians 2 verse 12. 2 Corinthians 2 verse 12. 
God opens the door of ministry. Furthermore, when I came to Troas to preach Christ's gospel, a door was opened to me of the Lord. This man was not just willing to serve God. It was God that was opening that said, come and serve me here. There is a point in your life and say, God, I want you to use me. There is a point God said, I want to use you. You don't get it. God will say, I want to use you. When you say, come over to Macedonia and help us, you are not the one saying, God, use me. God is saying, I have found you. There is somebody that God will open the door of ministry to. You will know your assignment. You will know what to do. There is another thing called the door of utterance. Colossians chapter 4 verse 3. That's another door God opens. The door of utterance. He said, with a pray for us that God will open unto us a door of utterance. To speak the mystery of Christ for which I am in bond. In the name of Jesus, God will open your door of utterance. That's another day. Finally, God opens the irresistible door. Revelation chapter 3 from verse 7 to 11. And this is where I think you stand. To the angel of the church in Philadelphia write, These are the things, these things said he that is holy, he that is true. He that has the key of David. He that opened it and no man shut it. He that shut it and no man opens Yes, I know your works. Behold, I've set before you an open door. And no man can shut it. Do you know why? For thou hast little strength. You have kept my word. You have not denied my name. Now, when you have little strength, you are constrained. But you did not give up. God said, I saw it. I saw how you tried to serve me in a very uninteresting year. I saw the way you served me in a year that didn't leave too much promises. I saw the days when you were of little strength, but you did not demand a name. He said, Behold, I will make them of the synagogue of Satan. We said they are Jews, but they are not. But do lie. I will make them to come and worship before thy feet. To know that I have loved thee. Verse 10. Because thou hast kept my word of patience, I will also keep thee from the hour of temptation, which shall come upon the whole world, to try them that dwell upon the earth. Behold, I come quickly. Old, old thou fast to that with thou hast. Let no man take your crown. You have kept my word of patience. Who is that man who served God in constraints this year? That's the man that kept the word of patience. You, the word of patience is kept when you have little strength. When there's, there, are, there are no much opportunities. But you did not turn and deny God at that point. I said, God is God. God said, ah, I saw you keeping my word when you had no strength. He said, therefore, I will open a door. I have learned both to abound and to abase. He that has the key of David he is good. He that has the key of David he is kind. He that open it and no man can shut. He that shut it and no man open it. He that open it and no man can shut. He that shut it and no man open it. He that has the key of David is good. He that has the key of David. He that open it and no man can shut. He that shut it and no man open it. He that open it and no man can shut. He that shut it and no man open it. He that open it and no man can shut. He that shut it and no man open it. He that open it and no man can shut. He that shut it and no man open it. Your voice, Lord, 
where I have had little strength and I've kept your word. Open a door to me in that same place where I have had little strength and I kept your word. Oh Lord, open a door where I have obeyed. Lord, make me to abound. We have endured. Lord, make me to reign. When he opens that door, nobody can shut it. No disease can shut it. When he decides to move in that direction, there's no situation coming on heart that can change it. Lord, I thank you because I flourish again. 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 I break out of every straight place, every, every constraint into a broad place. I want you to pray. Oh Lord, thank you. This is not just a door I'm knocking. This is a door you have opened. A door of faith. A door of utterance. A door of ministry. It will take me to new places for your glory. It will bring a new form of harvest. My horn is exalted like the horn of a unicorn and I am anointed with a fresh oil. My horn is exalted like the horn With a fresh I am anointed. I am anointed. I am anointed in the name of the Lord. I am anointed. I am anointed. I am anointed in the name of the Lord. I am anointed. I am anointed. I am anointed. I am defended. I am anointed. 
Welcome. I want to give you two minutes. I want you to pray on and ask for freshness to descend. He said, though you have little strength, I've opened a door. I've opened the door. A freshness that will make you take new steps of faith. Let it descend upon you. Jesus, reveal yourself afresh to your people tonight. Let your people see you. Let people see you tonight. Let your vision be vivid afresh. Maka todi basaya. Marabo lobo di kereboshin. Rakataya. You will not deliverance for us. Where we have seen no deliverance, we will see deliverance. Where we have seen no result, we will see great answers. Maka shara. Because of the fresh oil. The fresh oil. The fresh oil, the fresh oil, the fresh oil opens a door that no man can shut, no situation can shut, no economy can shut, no doctor's report can shut. Nesatoda, stir yourself up in the spirit. Ask for new doors of ministry, new doors of service. New doors of utterance, utterance levels, Agada Labosha, utterance levels, Ikatala Bokandaya, Zusef Rege de Batoga, let it open by his own accord. Wake up as a new man tomorrow morning. Shalala Labaya Gada, according to his own accord. Let the Lord open a door for you. Let the Lord open a door for you. Let the Lord open a door. In your business, let the Lord open the door. In your finance, let the Lord open the door. In your marriage, let the Lord open the door. In your prayers, let the Lord open the door. Irresistible door. La baraba yakada. No one can stop you. No decree of man can stop you. No plan of demons can stop you. No orchestration from the pit of hell can hinder you. Arise in strength. Arise in power. I cause every plan of darkness over you. Break every power of depression. Remove every weariness. Your head is lifted. You are anointed with a fresh oil. Over this church, we break every limitation. A door is open for us. A door of ministry. Iyele de boshaya daba. Magada la boshada la galaya. A door of ministry. A door of utterance. A door of faith. In the mighty name of Jesus. We see new converts everywhere. People coming to the knowledge of Christ. The door of faith is open. Saraba galaya daba. Nango robo kodeba. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Whatever you have not, either to let the Lord by Himself open the door. Yeah. Let Him give you strength yeah. to walk. In things you would even think will never come to pass. When Peter saw that it was God that opened the door, he didn't go back into the prison. He took the liberty. The liberty minister there, I give you right to take advantage. For healings, take advantage. For baptism of the Spirit, take advantage of it. Whatever you ask, receive it tonight. 
he saw that the Lord has opened the door and he began to take step forward towards freedom I break you free from addictions and the power of the enemy every step you take represents freedom 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 because of an open door it's not your strength it's not by might it's not by power it's by the Spirit of God so Spirit of God come upon people here tonight Marabashanda Kalabotana Legre na pos sevre di kalabotanda liga Jandre koposi vrende karamokotanda ya Rege sharonga kida bo karabokande le bokuri bakada ya Agarabokande rebogodi Let your glory rest upon people Let your glory come upon the health of people Wombs of people La ramokopai Jagadi korubakida kabo kanda rabayede robi karabokodi jara every and right thing that is contrary to you we take it out of the way we nail it to the cross walk free walk free I break every cost every recurring experience around your journey. Marabokundi Karabokaya. In the name of Jesus, I break it. I break it. Everything that makes the word of God look like a lie to you. And you say, Lord, I don't want to think about it again. I don't want to believe. I said that experience will not be your call. He that began a good work in you, we complete it to the of his coming. You can rest. Yeah. That good thing that has started will not stop. Yeah. It will not stop. Yeah. It will not stop. Yeah. It will only abound. Yeah. It will only increase. Yeah. In the name of Jesus. Yeah. That anointing will not depart. Yeah. I ask the hand of God to rest upon you. Yeah. Not just to fall on you, but to rest. Yeah. He said, He that you see the Holy Spirit descend and rest upon is the one that the Lord has chosen now the spirit has come upon you now it's resting upon you it's an abiding presence it's an abiding manifestation it will happen even when you are least prepared gifts of the spirit will manifest not according to the will of man but according to the will of God it's resting on you resting on you resting on you it's an open door it's an open door so prophesy that day you are receiving prophecy oh god somebody is speaking with new thoughts i'm prophesying i'm prophesying open your mouth and prophesy in one minute prophesy to yourself prophesy it's a door of faith some of you are beginning to see things you speak come to pass you will say it and say, you will decree a thing and it shall be established. You will decree a thing and it shall be established. It's an open door. It's a liberty in the spirit. Thank you, Lord. It's an open door. Oh, Lord, we give you praise. In Jesus' name. Dental conditions are healed. Every teeth growing out in a wrong place in your in your body. Any teeth growing around, out in the wrong place in your mouth. I arrest that pain. I bring no mouse. No mouse. In the name of Jesus. Lord, we declare by the Spirit of God, the constraint in the land is broken. The constraint in your church is broken. Amen. The constraints in your people's life is broken. We bring every one of us to a fat place. Amen. We are receiving children after we have lost. Amen. Every loss is forgotten. Amen. Increase we overcome for every loss. Amen. Increase we overcome for every loss. Amen. As you from this meeting, from this hour, it is an open door. Amen. 
they will call you for favor. They will call you for good things. It's an open door. It's an open door. It's an open door. In the name of Jesus Christ. Somebody give the Lord a big hand of praise. Somebody give the Lord a big hand of praise. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Are you blessed tonight? Yes, sir. I want you to go home with liberty. And say the door has been opened to me. All I need to do is to take my steps.